Hey guys, I've officially switched back to Android after three years of using the iPhone 12 Pro. This is the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra in titanium black, 512 gigabytes. And I've been using it for the past two months now, and my experience so far has been great, but there are a few things that I needed to get used to. Starting off with the design of the S24 Ultra, it's slim, slick, modern, and made of quality titanium material. The overall build feels very solid in the hand, however, the camera bumps are not ideal for laying the phone down on a flat surface like a table. I'm always a little hesitant to lay it down without a case due to this. A case would even out the camera bumps, but without one, the phone will start to rock on a flat surface. Especially coming from the iPhone 12 Pro, I want to mention that there is a big design change in that aspect coming from the iPhone 12 Pro. I am not used to having the volume buttons and the power buttons on the same side because on the iPhone they have it on opposite sides and so that's one of the first things that I noticed about the S24 Ultra in terms of the design and I needed to get used to over time so it took me some time to get used to this but at this point I'm relatively comfortable with it and I have a good awareness of the placement but that that's one aspect of the design that I don't like is the fact that the power button and the volume buttons are on the same side but I think that just takes used to it does make it challenging to take screenshots with just one hand i am aware that like the phone has a built-in screenshot button but it's also difficult to reach with just one hand due to the size of the phone ideally it would have been better if the volume keys and the power buttons were on opposite sides allowing for easier one-handed screenshot captures however this is you know a minor inconvenience and you can get used to it over time furthermore about the design the phone is quite large like almost humongous i didn't expect it to be this big at times Sometimes it's challenging just to hold it. It's also on the heavier side of phones. However, the reason for its size and the overall weight, it's due to its big battery and also a great screen, which for the most part is there to support the S Pen. Speaking of the screen, the phone has a 6.8 dynamic AMOLED display, which is stunning with anti-reflective coating, which is much better compared to the S23 Ultra for using outside or if you are around a lot of lights indoors. It's easy to see the screen on a sunny day thanks to its super bright 2600 nits peak brightness, while at the same time it also gets super dim. In addition to the lowest brightness via the sliding brightness controls, there's also an additional notification control panel option to do extra dim which is great if you're using the phone in the dark at night and you don't want to hurt your eyes along with enabling eye comfort shield and I have used it all the time especially when I'm using the phone at night it's very nice like I've seen memes where like the iPhone users are like oh this low brightness is not enough we need more Samsung S24 Ultra has you covered it can get even dimmer one thing I want to note about the display this is before the update when I first got the phone was that it felt like the overall and I guess it's more on the software side of things it felt like the overall screen and display was somewhat like had a white filter on it and I tried messing with the settings at the time to make it more vivid and like more color accurate and thankfully it was a software issue because after the update we do have the option to increase the vividness and you know have, get a more accurate color on the display and I think that has fixed the issue but initially I was not a fan there it felt like it, there was like a white filter over everything I'm glad they brought the option to increase the vividness and color accuracy of the display and for the most part I'm satisfied with it at the moment another thing to note it's a flat display now Samsung went to flat displays because they were trying to do curved displays for like a minute now and that was cool it looked futuristic but it was convenient in terms of applying screen protectors or if you needed to replace the screen it made it way harder replacing screen parts because now you have like curved display to worry about curved glass isn't as easy to replace as a flat glass I'm glad they went with a flat display this time and in my experience it's great and it's also great for the S Pen like you have a flat surface to write on just like how you write on paper another thing I want to note is that there is a in-display fingerprint reader and Samsung has been doing this for like a minute now and it just feels magical coming from the iphone 12 which does not have this uh, just face id i absolutely love the in-display fingerprint reader for like 90 percent of the time it does the job but in case it doesn't i also have face recognition enabled so either the fingerprint scanner will work or the face recognition will work i know the fingerprint scanner isn't perfect there is 10 percent of the time when it won't work and that's just because you need to have your finger like exactly over the circled area on the screen 
that is scanning your finger. All in all, I want to say like the display is absolutely gorgeous. Great colors, there's deep blacks and vibrant brights. The fact that it's such a large display though, which makes it ideal for S Pen support and you have a lot of screen real estate. Speaking of S Pen support, the S Pen is nice to have. It's easy to take notes, like especially if you're a student or you would just attend a lot of meetings and you need something to just quickly take down notes. The S Pen does a great job. It's very fluent. There's no lag at all or anything that you can notice with your naked eye. Notes are instance. It feels like you are writing on paper. It's super responsive. And in addition to, you know, just using the S Pen for taking notes, you can also use the S Pen for capturing photos. Like you can prop your phone against a wall or an object and then use your S Pen with the camera application open to take photos. And that's very handy at times. Like if you don't necessarily have a person to take pictures of you, you can do it yourself. And I have used it from time to time and I found it very handy. Moreover, the S Pen is very nice when it comes to editing photos, especially with the new AI features integrated with the phones now. You can select objects or subjects in the background that we'd like to erase or move. And you just get better precision with the S Pen when it comes to selecting exact areas or subjects that you'd like to erase or remove. So overall, the S Pen does enhance that feature of selecting items. but when it comes to like, do I use the S Pen every day? No, personally, it's not a need for me. Like I wish they had a smaller form factor without the S Pen, but you know, it still has the big cameras, the big battery. So overall with that aspect, with that form factor, without the S Pen, I would personally like it. Because there were times when I get a little, you know, it, it's it's weighing me down. Like it's it's big and heavy and I wish it was, they had a smaller form factor. But the S Pen does add a beautiful touch to the overall phone because it, it enables other features that you normally don't get on a smartphone these days. It's, it's a very handy, cool feature and I think it's nice to have, but personally it's not a need for me. But one thing I do want to mention though, the S Pen is super popular with kids. Like I have niece and nephews who love taking my phone and start drawing with the S Pen. Like ever since they found out whenever I'm in like a family gathering, they ask to borrow my phone to draw on it. So I know kids love that. So if you have niece and nephews or you have kids, the S Pen will be very popular to them. They will love this phone for that feature. So overall, I really like the S Pen, but personally, I don't think it's a need for me, but it's a nice feature to have. All right, let's talk about the battery. The S24 Ultra has a huge 5,000 milliamp battery. And personally, when it comes to batteries, all I really care about is if it will last a whole day. And the S24 Ultra definitely meets that need. It will in fact last you the whole day and some more. Coming from the iPhone 12 Pro, which I used for like the past three years, I would have to charge it fairly often. It got to a point where it was like 80% capacity and I would have to charge it like two or three times throughout the day to just charge it up so I can still use it. Coming from the iPhone 12 Pro to the S24 Ultra, it's been a big upgrade for me. Like the only time I charge the phone is during the night and I'm good for the rest of the day. And personally, I use slow wireless charging, which is great for the battery life in the long run. And therefore I'm hoping the battery capacity will last me way longer than it did on the iPhone 12 Pro. And so hoping, you know, over time I can use this for longer and the battery capacity holds, but I will keep you guys updated. I'm hoping for the best. So far, it seems promising, and I hope I can use this phone for many years to come. All in all, the battery life is great. It will last you the whole day and some more. When it comes to the camera, I want to talk about the camera before the update and after the update. So before the update, so this is when I first got the phone out of the box. I was excited to try out the camera, and from seeing all their ads and the announcement, you know, they emphasize the cameras. There's like, there's like four different cameras, a lot of megapixels. I'll put all this information on the screen, but they can spit out numbers and they can show the technology behind it and how the camera lenses came together. But how do the photos actually look? You know, that's what, as a consumer, that's what we care about. So before the update, the portrait mode was just poor. Although it would do a good job blurring out the background, it would equally do a poor job getting a clear shot of the subject. Like there was just a ton of noise on the subject. It simply wasn't clear. Likewise, the camera could not handle action shots at all. The subject would have to stand still. And at that point, that's not an action shot. In addition, taking just general quick photos, like you quickly take out your phone to capture something, it couldn't handle it. The photos just weren't clear. There was just too much noise. The only thing that I really liked about the 
phone right out of the box was the zoom feature. The zoom is really good right out of the box. In fact, it's insane how good the zoom feature is. Like just look at these photos of the Washington Monument. I was standing like 4,000 feet away, 500 feet below, and I can see the windows on top of the monument. And along with the zoom, the night photography and video with, with an impressive up to 8K video quality capabilities. I was fairly impressed with the video features, zoom and night mode, but considering I would want to use the camera more for still photos, portraits, and just quick photos here and there, I just wasn't impressed with the camera at all before the update. In fact, I was like completely disappointed with the camera. I was like really hoping at the time, I'm like, I really hope this update that everyone's talking about will fix the issues. And so finally the update came around and I was super excited to try it out and Samsung did it. They fixed all the issues I have just mentioned earlier. The noise and subject for portrait mode has been fixed. Action shots are better. And along with already good zoom, night mode, and various video options, the camera is a complete package at this point. I really like the portrait video, which is very similar to cinematic mode on the iPhone. And this is great for bureaus of products, which I will definitely be using going forward for my other review video. So all in all, right now, after the update, the camera is by far one of the best on an Android device at the moment and I would highly recommend it. It's great for average consumer and even professionals. Moving on to the performance, the S24 Ultra has a Snapdragon 8 Gen 3, which is absolutely amazing performance. And it's so good, like I don't even wanna showcase it. Like you have probably seen enough reviews, enough videos by Samsung and various other users talking about it that like you already know the performance is great. The Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 is just amazing. It's blowing away all the competitors. And I will put out the Geekbench scores on the screen. Like you can compare it to the last version of Samsung's like S23 Ultra. But personally, you know, I'm also kind of comparing it to the last Android device I have used, which was Galaxy Note 8. And it's it's a night and day difference. I know, you know, I shouldn't be necessarily comparing it to a seven year old phone, but that's the last time I experienced it. So it's a major upgrade. And even, you know, even if you compare it to the S23 Ultra, the numbers, speak for themselves, you can see overall the performance is a lot better. You know, in general, from my experience, it can handle heavy duty stuff like playing games or editing videos like 4K videos on the phone or editing 4K photos or just, you know, heavy duty activities can be easily done. Like I have no complaints about the performance. You can run multiple applications in the background. Multitasking is easy. You know, with the S Pen support and everything, it allows you to multitask easily. But over time, I have noticed the phone getting slightly hot especially in in those heavy duty performance cases but it's nothing crazy like i'm pretty sure every phone at this point does get slightly hot during heavy duty use but it's nothing like noticeable or bothersome overall the phone has great performance so i would highly recommend it if you do want a phone that's like powerful and can multitask and do basically a lot of things that not even many computers can't even do at that speed at that performance level so it's a very powerful computer when it comes to performance so one of the big thing or one of the main difference for the S24 Ultra that puts it apart from the S23 Ultra is its software and AI features. Like Samsung made a big deal about generative AI and just the AI features that this phone comes with. And to be honest, when I first saw the announcement, I was like, this may be a gimmick, you know, Galaxy AI. Like, I don't know, it just sounds like a fancy name might not actually pull through. So I was really surprised when I actually got this phone and hands-on got to experience the generative AI features such as you know editing photos and also just like creating unique wallpapers to your liking that's like my personal favorite like being able to just select a few words change a prompt here and there and generate an unique wallpaper that is just unique to your phone to your preference I think that feature is really cool and in addition to that you have these other generative features where you can erase objects or subjects in the background or post blur certain things or take away a reflection on on a photo stuff like that. It's all pretty impressive. I do really like circle to search. Samsung and Google made it seem like circle to search is explicitly for Galaxy phones or the S24 lineup. But no, this is a Google thing and it will be available on Pixel phones as well, like Pixel 8 Pro and so on. But circle to search is a great feature because there are times when I would like browsing the web and I see a certain item or a certain accessory someone has and I'm just wondering what it is and where can I get it if I would like. So the circle to search 
solve that problem. So you can hold your home button for a second, it will do a capture of your screen, and you can circle whatever is on the screen to search it. So circuit to search is definitely one of my favorite AI features that's, that's available with the S24 Ultra, and it will be available on other Android phones as well, like Google Pixel. Moving on, there's also Live Translate and Chat Translate, which is all cool AI features. Personally, on a day-to-day -day life, I have not been using those features as much, but I did try them out. For the most part, they do the job and they will translate. I'm not sure how accurate the translates are, but I have seen videos of other users trying it, and for the most part, it does the job. Moreover, I want to talk about One UI. So the last time I used One UI was on the Galaxy Note 8, so like seven years ago, and it was absolutely garbage. That was One UI 1.0. It was bad. It was slow. I did not like the UI. The overall UI didn't feel continuous. It didn't feel like it was the same part of the design. They were all, you know, you had widgets that looked like one thing and you had notifications that looked like another. So coming back to Android after some years now, One UI 6.1 is so much better, so much smoother, and it's just overall, I like the whole package. Everything is continuous. Everything seems like it's part of the overall UI. I love the new control panels. I love the widgets. There's one widget in particular, the weather widget, which is super nice. I hope they make more widgets like this. It has like a slight animation when you first put it on your home screen or when you open it up and then like you tap the widget and it opens up and then when it closes there's like a slight animation of like the person moving and you can see the weather. It's a very nice touch so like smooth animations, beautiful icons and widgets. The overall UI just feels fresh and clean. One thing I want to mention though is that coming from an iPhone to an Android after years the transition was fairly smooth and like the design aesthetic feels a lot like iOS. Like from the control center to like current active apps, like where you can see all the apps you have open, feel very much like iOS. And I guess that's a good thing because it just made the transition for me personally much easier. Like I'm already familiar with the UI. Although Android has a lot more advantages in terms of customization and whatnot, but for the most part, the default software that comes with it are very similar. And personally, I do like that. So all in all, software and AI features are absolutely top notch and I hope they continue this because it's looking really great and you know you can always improve it but for the most part I'm satisfied with it. In the past I would just download like a launcher and change the overall user interface but for this time around I am going to stick with the UI that's coming with the default software updates and personally I really like the new home screen and the lock screen. They are just so much nicer to look at in addition to the generative unique wallpaper papers it just pops and makes it very unique to you and that's something that i always liked about android all in all software and ai features are top notch definitely recommend it so let's talk about the pros when it comes to the pros there is a lot to like about this phone. The design, the build quality, titanium finish just feels very solid. The software, like I've just mentioned, it's, it feels very much like stock Android, especially with the partnership with Google. Camera is amazing with portrait modes, with various video options. Zoom is exceptionally good. And night photography just does the job. You know, it really brightens the photos you take. And for the most part, subjects look good. In addition, I want to mention the screen brightness it gets really bright and really dim at the same time. So that definitely checks out and it's super nice whenever you wanna use it outside in a sunny day, no problem. You also wanna use it at night in like a completely dark room, no problem. You can go extra dim and do what you gotta do. And lastly for the pros, I wanna mention the AI features, especially circle to search. It's like a futuristic feature. I feel like they have had this before, but the way they have implemented it now, it just makes it more accessible. Along with various other generative AI features, like being able to remove subjects, being able to edit photo afterward, they definitely make it a complete package. So overall a pro for the AI features and they are actually, you know, something I would use on a daily basis. For the cons, there are just few cons that I want to mention. The first is the price. Like this phone is expensive. It is $1,300 and based on your budget, this may not be the one for you, but it's a full package. It comes with the most powerful cameras, most powerful CPU and GPU, and you're getting a full package. So you are paying that premium price for all that, but it is pricey. Another thing I want to mention is that the phone is slightly too big and heavy. Like I mentioned before, I wish they had a smaller form 
factor with the same performance, same battery, same cameras, but just in a smaller form factor, I would definitely appreciate that. But I feel like that's just more of a preference thing. But over the time, you will get used to it. It's just from time to time, I do notice just how big the phone is. And last thing I want to mention is like the AI features are also a con because starting out, I really like the AI features right now. But one other thing I have seen and read articles about is like Samsung is not going to keep the AI features free for too long. They're going to provide the features free until the end of 2025 and then soon they will roll out a paid subscription option to keep using the AI features and I'm not a big fan of subscriptions in general like there's just too many subscription stuff nowadays you know Netflix, Amazon Prime, YouTube Premium, just Spotify there's just so many subscription based services nowadays that it kind of just gets annoying like just just another thing you got to pay for so I hope Samsung changes that or keeps it free for for longer but that's definitely a con in the longevity of the phone all in all would i recommend this phone it really comes to your preference and what your needs are but it is definitely a full package for the android phones out there right now it is by far the best android phone that's out there but it is pricey so definitely you know depends on your budget they do have the other phones in the lineup the regular s24 and then the s24 plus so definitely look at the other options as well but the s24 ultra if you're looking for the full package the top of the line top-notch features and both software hardware like all-around device then the s24 ultra is definitely for you great cameras design performance you know so i would highly recommend it but like i've mentioned earlier the only thing is it is pricey and kind of too big and heavy but looking beyond that it's by far the best android phone to date and i would highly recommend it well that is it for today guys don't forget to like comment subscribe ring that bell icon and as always have a superb day and thanks for watching watching.